Uh, as I just said, of course, that highly anticipated meeting is coming up between President Biden and China's President Xi. That'll be on Wednesday at the so-called APEC summit. It'll be in San Francisco. Our next guest says, quote, all issues are now on the table. Let's bring in Jeff Moon, former assistant U.S. trade rep for China and China Moon Strategies founder and president. Jeff, always appreciate your uh, joining us, sort of take us through. So why do you say and what does that mean when you say all issues are on the table? Well, the story of this summit really goes back to August of 2022, when Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan. China cut off most uh, diplomatic and contacts. Um, and in November of that year, the presidents agreed they would take steps to restore the relationship. So that was what the series of visits earlier this year was all about. And that was all designed to culminate in this summit this week and to restore relations. And so you hear in the news that they are talking about the full range, a number of things they weren't willing to talk about before, military to military relations, climate, maybe fentanyl, um, talking about AI. So we are talking about a much broader range of issues and this cycle that China has gone through to punish the U.S. for the Pelosi visit is now coming to a conclusion, and hopefully we can get back to serious business. And and there's no time to lose. There's a lot that's happening in the world that requires the attention of both countries. Yeah, there is an awful lot. You know, it's funny. We were, we were covering Singles Day in China, and I, I was thinking I was there nine years ago in Shanghai, and how it was, you know, the relationship between the two countries China's economy, you know, things are so different now, but you seem to believe that they've hit bottom. Uh, I'm not talking about their economy. I'm talking about relations between China and the U.S. You do believe that sort of things can actually get better? Because all they've done in the last nine years, it feels like, since I was there, is get worse. Yeah, well, uh, we really are at a low. What, what I was really saying was over the past year or so, we've seen the pattern of coercion and retaliation that China exerts when it's displeased. Mm -hmm. You know, it uh, cuts off either some kind of political or economic benefit. It tries to blame the other side. It tries to elicit sincerity in the form of concessions. And then eventually they restore the relationship. So that's what's happening right now. It just so happens the same thing is happening with Australia on a different range of issues. So what's going to happen at this summit is that China is rolling out a lot of these sorts of ceremonial or procedural things that they've done in conjunction with other summits, people-to-people uh, -people relations, um, a dinner with the business community, things like that. Um, but unlike in previous summits, there's not going to be much of a budge on substance. I just wonder how the, the world geopolitics changes the dynamic now, Jeff, because what, what's happened is that China and the U.S. are backing different horses in Russia, Ukraine, and in Israel, Hamas. And so this isn't just about U.S.-China relations anymore. No, absolutely not. And another thing that's happened that's very interesting, over the past year and a half, while China has been, quote, punishing the United States, they've also been putting out a series of global governance initiatives, defining what they think is their vision for moving forward in the world. And it's very different from the democratic vision. This is something that a way to uh, justify the authoritarian system that they have. But the Chinese now claim that they have a better way than the West does, and they're shopping it to the global South. And so uh, you have a point. We are seeing a division uh, between the U.S. and China in the way that they're trying to lead the world through the governance systems and the visions that they have.